This video lecture is going to explore the differences between progressive, proportional, and regressive taxation systems. We're going to learn how to calculate the effects of different types of tax systems on three individuals whose incomes range from $15,000 to $60,000 per year. In the end, we're going to discuss and analyze using the Lorenz curve the varying impacts of these three types of taxes on the level of income distribution in a country. Let's start by looking at the three individuals whose income we're going to examine the effect of different tax systems on. Our first individual, A, earns $15,000, and we're going to assume that that individual consumes 80% of his income every year, meaning that he spends 80% of his income on goods and services. Individual B earns $30,000 per year and consumes 70% of his income, while individual C earns $60,000 per year and consumes 60% of his income. The first question you may have is, why does each individual consume a different proportion of his total income? The theory here is quite simple, and it has to do with what we call the average propensity to consume. The idea is that individuals with lower incomes must consume a larger proportion of their income just in order to pay for the basic necessities of life, food, rent, clothing, transportation, things like that. On the other hand, individuals who earn higher incomes are able to save more of their income and only need a smaller proportion of their income for consumption. This is going to have an impact on the effect of a consumption tax when we get to that later on in this lesson. So next, let's discuss the three types of taxes that we're examining today. Let's start with the progressive tax. Progressive tax is quite simple. It's defined as a tax on income for which the percentage increases as income increases. We can see how a progressive tax works looking at this tax table we see on the right here. In this table, we see four levels of income ranging from zero to $12,000 up to $48,000 and above. And then on the right, we have the tax rates that people will pay on income in each of those four tax brackets. We're going to illustrate this now using our three individuals as examples. Let's start with individual A. Individual A earns $15,000. So how much tax will individual A pay? The $15,000 income puts individual A in our 12% tax bracket. However, since that 12% only has to be paid on income earned above $12,001, the way we can determine the amount of tax paid by individual A is multiplying the different levels of income between zero and 15,000 by the tax rate for that level of income. For example, from zero to $12,000, this individual will pay 0%, which means on income earned between 0 and $12,000, the tax paid will be $0. However, between $12,000 and $15,000, this individual will be paying 12% tax. So I can multiply that by 12% in decimal form, which is 0 0.12. And to determine how much total tax this individual will pay, I just have to take the $3,000 of taxable income and multiply it by 0 0.12, and I get a total tax liability of only $360. So I can put that $360 into the amount of tax paid by individual A. $360 is the amount of tax paid on this individual's $3,000 of taxable income. Now, to determine the average tax rate paid by individual A, all I have to do is take the 360 and divide it by his total income of $15,000. So I'll do that over here. The average tax rate is the amount of tax paid divided by income. In this case, that's $360 divided by the income of $15,000, which gives me an average tax rate of 0 0.024, which expressed in percentages, gives me an average tax rate of 2.4%. Now over here in the table, I can put this individual's average tax rate at just 2.4%.
So you may be asking, I thought this individual paid 12%. How come his average tax rate is only 2.4%? And to remind you, only the income earned above the lowest tax bracket can be taxed. In this case, 12% of the $3,000 of taxable income provides this individual with a tax burden of just 2.4%. Let's now calculate the amount of tax paid and the average tax rate of individual B. This is going to require a few more calculations in order to come up with the total tax burden. Again, on zero to twelve thousand dollars, the individual is going to pay zero dollars in tax. Now, to determine how much the individual pays on the next bracket, we need to say, well, this individual is earning more than twenty-four thousand, so they're going to pay from twelve thousand to twenty-four thousand dollars, twelve percent tax, which gives us a total amount of tax paid on that bracket of his income of $1,440. But the individual is earning more than $24,000. So on the next $6,000 from $24,000 to $30,000, this individual owes 24% tax. So we multiply that amount by 0.24. That gives us $6,000 times 0.24 a tax, an additional tax of $1,440 will be paid on the $6,000 earned between $24,000 and $30,000. Now we have this individual's total tax liability, which is $2,880. So in the amount of tax paid column, we can put $2,880 for individual B. So what's the average tax rate of individual B? To determine the average tax rate for individual B, we divide the amount of tax he pays by his income of $30,000, and that gives us an average tax rate of 9.6%. As you can see, the average tax rate is rising as income rises, but not as quickly as the marginal tax rate did. And this, once again, is because the marginal tax rate only applies to income earned above a certain level. Individual C is the richest, highest income individual in our example. We're now going to calculate the amount of tax and the average tax rate for individual C. We're going to use the same method as we have for A and B. So I'll quickly go through that method here. As you can see, individual C will pay $1,440 on the first $12,000 of taxable income, $5,760 on the next $24,000 of taxable income, and another $57,000, $5,760 on the last $12,000 of taxable income. This will give this individual a tax liability of $12,960. We can now add that to our table under the amount of tax paid by individual C. So what does this mean for individual C's average tax rate? Using the same method of dividing the amount of tax paid by the income, we can calculate the individual's average tax rate as coming out to 21.6%. So let's look at the impact of the progressive tax system on the amount of tax paid and the average tax rate of the three individuals in our example here. Notice that the individual earning $15,000 ended up paying, not surprisingly, the lowest amount of tax. This individual also had a lower average tax rate of just 2.4% compared to the much higher average tax rates of individuals B and C. As the income of the individuals rose, the amount of tax paid and also the average tax rate increased. The progressive tax places a larger burden on those with the higher income than it does on those with the lower income. However, it should be pointed out that the average tax rate does not increase as rapidly as the marginal tax rate. The explanation for this, once again, is that marginal tax rates only apply to income earned above a certain amount. Any income earned below that amount is taxed at a lower rate, or in the case of income between zero and $12,000, not taxed at all. Let's move on to a proportional tax system. This is a much simpler calculation and it's not going to take us nearly as long. A proportional tax, sometimes called a flat tax, is simply a percentage paid on an individual's income that does not change with the level of income. In this case, we've got three individuals, each are going to pay a 10% tax on their income. It doesn't matter that their income is higher or lower. So our calculation is really quite simple. All we need to do is multiply the amount of income earned by the proportional 
flat tax rate. For individual A earning $15,000, this means he'll pay $1,500 in taxes. Individual B will pay $3,000 in taxes. And individual C will pay $6,000 in taxes. The average tax rate will be 10%. No larger burden is placed on people with higher incomes, nor is a lower burden placed on people with lower incomes. This will have an impact when we go to evaluate the effect of different tax systems on income inequality.